Welcome to the Pre-K for Me Unit 5 Overview, Shadows and Reflections. This overview is presented by the Early Learning Team. Unit 5 in Pre-K for Me is Shadows and Reflections. The goals for this unit overview include to learn the overall unit concepts, to connect concepts to read-alouds, centers, and small groups, and to gain some tips to support your instruction and flow of the unit. Shadows and reflections. What are the big ideas? In the unit, children will explore the properties of light and how it is beneficial to people and animals. Children will learn the science of shadows and reflections through experiments and exploration. Shadows and reflections, the unit concepts. Light comes from natural and artificial sources. Light affects people, animals, and things. Reflections are images thrown back from a shiny surface. Light must be present or there will be no reflection. Mirrors and still water reflect light well. Dull surfaces do not. Objects vary in the amount of light they allow to pass through them. These variations are opaque, translucent, and transparent. Shadows are dark areas formed when light is blocked by an object. These concepts will be introduced through various activities, including your read-alouds, small groups, and let's find out about it, and then reinforced through centers and other daily activities. The core read-aloud books. Core read-alouds drive the focus of the unit. Connections are made in other curriculum components to these core books. Story read-alouds introduce and support vocabulary and concepts. It is also an opportunity for story discussion and comprehension, as well as story reconstruction and retelling. Story read-alouds and the discussions provide opportunities for analytical thinking and higher order thinking skill development. The first story introduced in the unit is Play With Me. In the story, the little girl goes out to play in the meadow and invites a variety of animals to play with her. You will have discussions about the animals and nature in the story, why the animals do not want to play with her and why they come to play at the end. You will point out and have conversations about the reflections of the girl and the animals in the pond. The second story we introduce is Raccoon on his own. In this story, the young raccoon becomes separated from his family. You will have conversations about their feelings as he is separated and then reunited from his family. The other animals that he sees, the swamp and other aspects of nature, and reflections in the water. The third story introduced is Kitten's First Full Moon. In this story, Kitten sees her first full moon and mistakes it for a bowl of milk. You will talk about the actions that Kitten takes trying to get to the milk, her feelings, and the reflections in the water. The fourth story in the unit is Moon Bear's Shadow. In this story, Bear is out fishing and his shadow keeps scaring the fish away. Bear tries to get rid of his shadow. Again, you will have discussions about feelings and the aspects of nature, including the times of day, and of course, the shadow and why he can't get rid of his shadow. Our last story in this unit is Puddle Pail. In Puddle Pail, two crocodile brothers go to the beach with pails. Each brother has different things that they like and different ideas about what to do with their pails. You will have discussions about puddles and reflections in the puddles, feelings, shapes, nature, shadows, and about collections, including on ideas of what students may want to collect or may already collect. Vocabulary. Vocabulary development is an important aspect of the Pre-K for Me curriculum. Vocabulary words are introduced through core books, let's find out about it activities, and small group activities. New vocabulary is reinforced through Centers and Swiftland, as well as read aloud, let's find out about it, and small groups. 
Really, all parts of your day have opportunities to reinforce and strengthen vocabulary. The vocabulary in core books. Here you see a lesson plan for a read aloud. This is for Raccoon on his own. Vocabulary words are listed at the top. You can see the arrow pointing to them. And they are also listed in the lesson plan in bold print. Lesson plans go through the first, second, third, and fourth reading. And they also include additional statements to deepen comprehension and unit concepts. Centers. Centers provide wonderful opportunities for incidental teaching and vocabulary development. It is a time to help children make connections back to the core read aloud stories and to lessons from Let's Find Out About It and small groups. It is also a time to make connections to students' lives and the world around us, as well as have deep conversations and support their language and concept development. Supporting vocabulary during centers. During centers, teachers engage with students to expand their learning and deepen their understanding and use of the unit vocabulary words and concepts. A helpful tool in supporting students with vocabulary and concept development is the center language support for each center. Here you see one for the art center for week one. You should refer to the language supports for each center as they highlight a variety of vocabulary to use when engaging with students as well as give examples of comments and questions to pose to students that will support their higher level thinking. The Block Center in Unit 5. Children will use mylar and mirrors in the Block Center to explore reflections. Plain walls or poster board will be used to explore shadows by using flashlights, other sources of light, and various blocks and objects. And children will use unit blocks and beautiful stuff to create museums. The Mylar Blocks and Mirror and Blocks Centers. In the Mylar and Block Center, connections will be made to Raccoon on his own. Children will explore reflections on Mylar and with Mylar covered blocks. They'll compare and contrast reflections to the story, experiment with moving light sources, and compare and contrast reflections from different structures. Similar to that, we have Mirrors and Blocks. Connections can be made to Raccoon on his own and play with me. Compare and contrast reflections to those in the story. Similar to the Mylar, experiment with moving the source of light. Create settings from the two different stories. Record the structures and reflections in writing and drawing. And a helpful tip for you, if you do not have Mylar available, wrap blocks in aluminum foil or even shiny wrapping paper. Experimenting with shadows. This picture shows a student working on a table. This, this center will also be done with larger blocks and other materials in your block center. Story connections to Moon Bear Shadow and Guess Who's Shadow from Let's Find Out About It. Children will use and build with different materials and objects to experiment with shadows. Compare and contrast shadows. Experiment with moving light sources and or using different sources of light. Create shadows that overlap. Museum creation. In this center, connections will be made to Puddle Pail and to the Let's Find Out About It Museum Collections activity. Children will build display shelves and cases for their collections. Try to work on labeling collections and challenge them to build multiple levels. Dramatization in Unit 5. Children will create a woodland and or swamp area and pretend to be different animals living in that area. Children will explore moving and dancing shadows and children will pretend to go fishing. Woodland and swamp areas. In this center, connections will be made to play with me and raccoon on his own. Using the knowledge gained from the stories, from research done in the library center, and even using paintings made in the art centers, students will create woodland or swamp areas. Pretend to be different animals found in those areas. You can use mylar to have reflective surfaces and try to make props and animal costumes for the centers. Dancing shadows. This picture shows an example of taking the dancing shadows activity outside. 
This of course also takes part in your classroom using different light sources during centers. Connections made to moon bear's shadow and kitten's first full moon. Compare shadow movements to shadow puppets and illustrations from the stories. Move like different animals from the books from this unit and other books that children are familiar with. Write and dictate stories about their shadows. Gone fishing. Connections to moon bear's shadow will be made here. Students pretend to fish. They can compare sizes of fish and measure fish to determine if they are too small. Children can create props and scenery for your lake and pond. The art studio in unit five. Children will create woodland and swamp paintings, shiny paintings and paintings with outlines. Children will create black, white and gray illustrations. And children will create reflective collages and stained glass collages. Some examples of painting and illustration. Through the, throughout the unit, there are a variety of painting opportunities, making creations inspired by the core books. Children create art connected to play with me and raccoon on his own by painting woodland or swamp paintings. You can see that there on the screen. And they create black, white, and gray art connected to Kitten's first full moon, which is also shown. Shiny paintings connecting to Play With Me and Raccoon on his own can be done in a few different ways. You see here painting on aluminum foil with metallic paint and with a shiny paint made using cornstarch. We have a tip for you on this one. If you do not have metallic or shiny paint, painting on aluminum foil can make any painting a shiny painting. In the art studio, children will also create paintings with outlines, like those used in Moon Bear's Shadow, which is not shown on the slides. Collages. Two types of collages are created in this unit. Reflective collages, connecting to Play With Me, Raccoon on His Own, and Kitten's First Full Moon. That's what you see on your screen. Compare and contrast reflective and non-reflective, shiny and dull surfaces and objects when students are creating. Stained glass collages are also created in this unit. Connections can be made to let's find out about it. Again, compare and contrast the collages. Look for shapes within collages. Write and dictate about the collages created. Students' collages can also be used for backdrops in centers, such as the block center or dramatization. Library in Unit 5. Along with the opportunity to read and retell unit books, Students will get the chance to do research topics and put on a puppet show. Children will research woodland, swamp, and nocturnal animals and puppets. Children will put on a puppet show. The research. Using resources provided in the Pre-K for Me documents, as well as any other resources you may have, children will research and document their findings. Connections will be made to Play With Me, Raccoon on His Own, and Kitten's First Full Moon. Compare the illustrations from core read aloud books to the nonfiction resources. Here you see some of the Pre-K for Me resources, Woodland Animals in Maine, Swamps in Maine, and Who is Awake at Night. Another area that we research is puppets. A resource tip is provided. Try to provide students with real puppets to give them a real world example and hands on experiences. Also in the library, you will do shadow puppet theater. Using shadow puppets, children will retell and act out the story, play with me. Have discussions and ask questions about the story and you will support children in deciding who will be the audience and who will be the puppeteers. The Discovery Center in Unit 5. Children will explore reflections in water. Use a variety of objects throughout the different weeks of the unit. Connections will be made to Play With Me, Raccoon on His Own, and Puddle Tail. Children will re explore reflections in water and compare and contrast reflections of different objects and materials. Another tip for you is to extend this activity. Take it outside and look for reflections in puddles. 
manipulatives in Unit 5. Children will complete woodland animal puzzles. They will match shadows to the animal or object creating it. And they will sort reflective and non-reflective items and create collections. In the manipulative center, connections may be made to all of the unit books and concepts. Vocabulary and key concepts will be reinforced as well as other learning opportunities. Writing in Unit 5. Children will search for and record shadows and reflections in the classroom. Children will trace and label shadows. And children will write about collections. Children will search the room for shadows or reflections, depending on the week, and record their findings on classroom maps. They will also have the opportunity to trace and label shadows, as you see here. Connections may be made to all unit books. Compare and contrast the shadows and reflections that are found. Talk about how the reflection or the shadow was made. Was it from a natural or artificial source of light? And how is something a reflection and not a shadow and vice versa? Children will make collections and label and write about their collections. You will make connections to Puddle Pail for this. Children will create, label, and write about their collections. Have students describe the collections. Ask students about the collections and have conversations about how the collections created are similar to those in the story or to a museum and how they are different. Vocabulary in Let's Find Out About It. Let's Find Out About It provides connections to core read aloud books and introduces and or emphasizes key vocabulary. Vocabulary instruction and development as well as concept development occurs in Let's Find Out About It lessons. The knowledge gained from Let's Find Out About It supports enhanced learning in centers and small groups. Let's find out about it topics in this unit include reflections, sources of light, clear and blurry reflections, which is the lesson plan that you see here with the vocabulary highlighted for you, nocturnal and diurnal animals, shadow puppets, opaque, translucent, and transparent, reflections on surfaces, stained glass, museum collections, and finally, how light is helpful. Let's find out about it in Unit 5. Here are some examples. As mentioned, Let's Find Out About It provides opportunities to deepen vocabulary and concept knowledge. Here we have pictures from various Let's Find Out About It activities. Two pictures are from museums right here in Maine for the museum collection, Let's Find Out About It. You also see examples of stained glass and of exploring transparent, translucent, and opaque objects. Vocabulary and small groups. Small groups are opportunities to introduce vocabulary and concepts, but also to deepen those vocabulary and, and the concept knowledge. Small groups in this unit include kaleidoscopes, reflective and non-reflective materials, that's the lesson plan shown here, mirror me, reflection search, shadow search, shadow puppets, shadow tracing, and an initial, initial consonant game. Math small groups occur during the small group component and address math concepts throughout the unit. For example, shadow measuring, making tall trees, and fill your puddle pail. Some examples of small groups in unit five. In the small groups, children will learn and have additional practice with vocabulary and concepts. It is an opportunity to support and deepen children's understanding of the concepts. Small groups provide hands-on learning experiences. The examples from Unit 5 shown here are kaleidoscopes, tall, tall tree, napping house art, fill your puddle pail, and measuring shadows. Some overall tips for Unit 5. Have plenty of flashlights and other various forms of light sources. If mylar or even mirrors are not available, use aluminum foil and take activities outside. Reflections and shadows can be easily explored outside. Some helpful links 
The first link is directly to the Pre-K for Me Unit 5 page. We also have a link for just the Pre-K for Me landing page where you have additional documents and guiding documents. And then also the DOE early learning page that has numerous resources available to you. If you have further questions regarding Pre-K for Me, you can contact Nicole Medor at that email listed there. And the rest of our early learning team, all of our early learning team is listed on this slide. Hopefully this unit overview was helpful.